You want answers about the future of DC. I want answers about the future of DC. And we're not going to get them, everyone. When James Gunn says he wants to focus on what's worked with these DC films and projects and basically fix with, with what hasn't worked within DC, you want to ask him, well, what do you think James has worked and hasn't worked? So let's look at what's worked and what hasn't worked. In, in our point of view, in my point of view, as a YouTuber and a DC fan, let's look at Man of Steel around 600 and 50 million, a divisive film. Henry Cavill mostly loved as Superman, his Man of Steel film splits fans. There's no question about that. You could argue that Man of Steel may be one of the things that didn't work, even though I adore it as a movie. Certainly, Batman versus Superman Dawn of Justice is one of those situations that I'm sure that James has looked at and feels didn't work for the mainstream audience, which is the audience they need to suck in to this franchise. That's where the financial growth and potential is. And Batman versus Superman, certainly one of those things that he, he, he will feel didn't work. It's a very unique telling of Batman and Superman's first meeting. It's an interesting film. It's, it's, it's a well-made film as far as I'm concerned. Ben Affleck is a really good Batman and Bruce Wayne. But in terms of the film, you could say it's one of those films that didn't completely work for audiences. And that's a fact. Suicide Squad, which was literally cut to pieces and interfered with by the studio, worked for the audience because it made nearly $800 million globally. But for critics, it didn't. Basically, we'll never know, unless the air cuts released, what David Ayer was going to do with this film. So we'll never know if that's one of the things he wants to fix. I mean, look, David Ayer again, supporting James Gunn on Twitter. And, you know, I think it's about time David Ayer gets some loyalty from James Gunn and he releases his cut of Suicide Squad so we can know if that element worked or not. That's interesting, right? The first Wonder Woman movie absolutely worked in every way. I know some people don't like the third act. I love the whole movie. One of my favourite um, comic book movies of all time. Surely James Gunn understands Gal Gadot is a must for Wonder Woman. You'd have to be a moron to replace Gal as Wonder Woman. And James Gunn isn't a moron, whatever you think of him. She states that first movie is great. Justice League, of course, didn't work. Studio interference. Now, did Zack Snyder's vision of Justice League work? Will James Gunn believe that that film worked? Because it's all about creative opinions, isn't it? I think as a piece of art, it's absolutely fantastic and beautiful. Now, would it have worked as a piece of mainstream cinema? Probably not. So they have to look at the Justice League. It's looking to me that they will replace some elements of the Justice League, bringing new characters into the Justice League and mesh that together. So definitely a semi-reboot, which I think is problematic. You are basically what they're attempting. Basically, I told you a few videos ago, they are attempting to rebrand the DCEU and fix what they feel didn't work. So it's another leadership who thinks they can fix the DCEU, now calling it DCU. And they think they can fix it and take out the problematic elements and put other elements in. So this is clearly what he's attempting to do there. Then we have Aquaman, which is a very interesting situation. Because according to the Hollywood Reporter, um, Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom will be the final Aquaman movie for Jason Momoa. That that universe, the Aquaman universe, is going. And they're going to start again with Aquaman. And rumours say that maybe Jason Momoa will kind of have his, let's say, ego smoothed over by playing Lobo. But what does this mean for Jason Momoa? Is this a good look for Jason Momoa? We get this inclusive casting for Jason Momoa as Aquaman. He works. There's not one person who doesn't like him as Aquaman. Even if you prefer a version with blonde hair and blue eyes, you must admit, He's a fucking awesome Aquaman. So we've got someone who, let's say, is a minor minority actor playing a villain. Isn't that somewhat problematic? Now, it looks like Jason Momoa is fine with this. But the industry always talks about positive kind of stereotypes, inclusion and representation. 
Isn't that this a contradictory situation? And what's going to happen with Aquaman? Are we going to get a blonde hair and blue eyed Aquaman? Or is he going to cast a black man as Aquaman? Is he going to take a deeper dive into the inclusion? We'll have to wait and see. I'm guessing he doesn't like Jason Momoa as Aquaman because it's not comic book accurate. I think we are going to get a blonde hair and a blue eyed Aquaman. Now, to me, I think Aquaman's one of those things that wasn't broken. James Wan's movie was beautiful, but also James Wan was talking about maybe Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom being his last movie. He said he had no plans for a sequel. He was just going to make one movie and they persuaded him to come back. So James Wan's sequel is going to be absolutely stunning. It's one of the DC films of next year I'm really looking forward to. Now, to me, that universe doesn't need fixing, but that's just my opinion. You can just expand on it. But clearly, James Gunn believes that does. Now, James Gunn talks about a fractious environment within the fans because modern day Hollywood don't like their customers. It's not the fans who went to Boris Kitt and the Hollywood Reporter, James, and basically grasped you up, exposed your secrets. You upset people at Warner Brothers. That's clear. And they've gone to Boris Kitt, the Hollywood Reporter, and they've said, they've told him, a lot of interesting things and I'm sure there's more information to come because Boris doesn't let all his information come out at once. No good journalist does. So don't worry about us. We'll mouth off on Twitter about you, fine, but it's the enemies you're making at WB that are the problem. So then you have Superman. The whole Superman situation is very, very interesting. Does Henry Cavill stay as Superman or does he go? We really don't know. Is he looking for a better movie for um, Henry or is he going to just say Henry isn't right? He's not what I'm looking for as Superman. And then what kind of direction do you go with Superman? So it's interesting. It's an interesting situation. From the outside looking in right now, and if you believe what the Hollywood reporter and Boris Kitt said, they're really not going to go forward on Henry Cavill, which... As I said on my video earlier, if this was a situation where he's rebooting and replacing everyone, including his Suicide Squad cast and Peacemaker cast and all of that, if he was starting from scratch and he was being equal with it, I'd be fine with it. But when you're keeping your own wife, as I said earlier, and replacing Henry Cavill, I find that a little bit toxic, don't you? And so basically James Gunn's in a situation now where the room, the walls are closing in on him because he's going to be making a lot of controversial decisions. He's going to replace actors that we've grown used to within these roles. He's going to replace directors. Now, in his um, thread on Twitter yesterday, he spoke about doing the best thing for these characters. I think that says that we're not here for the directors or for the actors or the what people that you've got used to doing this stuff. We're here to make the best versions of these stories and these characters. And if he's being genuine about this, I back him in that stance because it is DC that's the most important thing and not these actors and not these directors. Patty Jenkins had to go anyway. Whether she quit, you know, or, you know, whether she quit or she was fired. Listen, um, James Gunn is well within his rights to tell Patty Jenkins to give Patty Jenkins notes. But Patty is well within her rights as a director to say, do you know what? I don't need this. I don't need this shit. Um, but he should have just fired her anyway. Apparently, it was Mike DeLuca and Pam Abbey who gave her notes and not James Gunn. So a very interesting situation. I believe she was fired. And I think the whole thing about her quitting and refusing the notes is just something to make her, her rep look a little bit better. She should have been fired ages ago. Um, Emmerich should never have greenlit a Wonder Woman 3 so quickly. Like, basically, Wonder Woman 84 had just been released and they gave her a Wonder Woman 3. That was, as you know, if you follow, you know, if you're a consistent follower of my content, you know it was something I was really concerned about. I like Patty Jenkins as a person and she's a really good director. I just don't think she gets Wonder Woman. And the whole idea here is that she apparently made Wonder Woman 3 very similar to Wonder Woman 84 and basically, basically she told Adby and DeLuca that they don't understand character arcs and they told her what she was doing wasn't what they wanted and wasn't part of the new universe. 
uh, their, their vision. But there's another issue here. I'm happy she's gone because I don't like her creative process with Wonder Woman. I don't like her vision of Wonder Woman because what happened in the first film was very little to do with Patty Jenkins. But this does pose more red flags because this is the thing with interconnected franchises. There's very little place for a director's vision. And it's all about the vision of the people running the franchise. We've seen it with the MCU. Now, hopefully James Gunn being a director himself, he gets that. So I'm not going to really sit here and prejudge situations, but I'm, I'm also going to tell you this, and I said it earlier as well, a soft reboot isn't a good thing and a good look for me. As I say, it's looking like he wants to keep things that work aka Gal Gadot's Wonder Woman. You would imagine, you would imagine she's going nowhere unless she leaves in protest for Patty Jenkins. And I don't think that Gal Gadot is that kind of person. You know, she nearly quit the industry before Zach cast her as Diana, aka Wonder Woman. So you think she'd be very appreciative and she'd do anything to keep this role. So it'd be interesting if she stays. As I say, if they rebooted the whole thing and recast it from scratch, meaning everyone, including James's Suicide Squad actors. I'd be happy with that. But what he's doing is he's going to pick and choose what he keeps and what he doesn't keep. Now, there's only one way of doing this, because you can't suddenly vanish half the cast and half the directors in the next, you know, franchise, the DC Universe. So you would need a new timeline, which is exactly what Walter Hamada was going to do. So you could imagine that, you know, the Flash movie being unlocked is a great place because of Flashpoint, because of the speed force of changing the DC universe, the DCEU timeline. This is what Walter Hamada was planning. But what Gunn has said to fans, and he said it the other day to a fan as well, we're, we're, we're looking to shepherd these movies, then our universe will start with the first DC universe movie. So by saying that clearly, doesn't really sound like they're using the Flash movie to create a new timeline, but we'll wait and see on that because it sounds like no decisions have really been locked in right now. I think there's a lots of different people there because I don't think that Gunn and Saffron have got total control. That's another problem. I think Abby and DeLuca are there saying their bit, Zaslav's there saying his bit, Alan Horn's there doing his bit. Basically, you have an issue here where you have so many different voices saying different things and no decisions are being made because no one can make a decision nobody can agree now this situation can work when you're working on a tv show and you have a writer's room and people get a vote and decide what to do within the script of that episode it's a good thing because having many voices is good because they keep you alert just having your own opinion and saying yeah i'll do that can be problematic but you know, if they can't make their minds up, someone's going to have to say, do you know what? This is what we're doing. For me, biting the bullet and clearing the decks totally is the right thing to do. But it sounds like what Gunn's saying, this is not what they're looking to do. But here's the problem. I've just told you. There's too many voices. They can't agree. But then you've got Gunn coming on Twitter saying, we're doing A, B and C, when really they're not even decided if they're doing A, B and C. This is what I mean. He can't keep his mouth shut. Now, some people appreciate him admitting that the Hollywood Reporter article had fragments of truth in it. I believe the whole thing was truthful and whether you want to believe that yourself or not. But he had to respond to that. He had to. Silence would have made the situation worse. I don't think the situation is any better because of what he said, because basically he pretty much admitted to a soft reboot. As I say, that's a problem because you should just start again. People would still be angry. People would still be angry, but um, yeah, because you're going to recast people's favourite actors. I get that. So people would have been angry. What he should have done when he started talking about this from the day he got the job, because he hasn't stopped talking and teasing front covers of famous comics and things like that. He should have said from the very outset, listen, we can't tell you all of our plans. We haven't made all our decisions, but this is what I'm going to tell you to be straight with you. We are looking to reboot this franchise and replace many, many actors. We are grateful to all the people who have basically been involved and worked within the DCEU, but we're looking to go a new direction. That's what he should have said, and he should have left it at that until he had a slate to talk about.
And because he didn't do that, he was disingenuous. And now, all of a sudden, exposed on an article, we find out that they are looking to replace some people. That there's no Wonder Woman 3. There's no Man of Steel 2. Man of Steel 2 cancelled. Wonder Woman 3 cancelled. Aquaman basically cancelled after Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. So we're definitely getting a new Aquaman. It looks like we're definitely getting a new Superman. And we're getting a new Batman unless we move Rob over to DCU, which I think is the best idea moving forward because I don't want loads of Batman. But here's the thing, Zaslav says we're not going to have three or four Batman. But potentially we could have Robert Pattinson, a DC Universe Batman. And don't forget, there's going to be a Bruce Wayne in the Joker sequel as well. There's already a Joker. Uh, sorry, there's already a, a young Bruce Wayne in the first Joker. And I've been told by my sources that there's going to be a much older Bruce Wayne in this movie as well. And he's a big deal in the story. So that's three Bruce Waynes. So I don't know where Zaslav, you know, of clearly you're going to have different people in this franchise playing Bruce Wayne. You need one Bruce Wayne and it needs to be Robert Pattinson. But we'll see what they do there. So what you've got now is leaks. Nothing's changed there. Plenty of indecision. And if Gunn had just been transparent, a little bit transparent by saying we are going to reset these things or... If he was planning a soft reboot from the very beginning, he should have said, listen, what he said yesterday was perfect. That's what he should have said from the outset. He should have said from the outset, we'll keep the things that are working in our opinions and we won't keep the things or we'll improve upon the things that we believe don't work. If he said that from the very outset, kept his mouth shut, didn't tease the comic book covers, just shut up until he had a slate and a plan to talk about. But he can't help himself because of his ego. He wants to be centre of attention. He wants people to keep on, you know, tagging his name. Oh, James Gunn. Oh, James Gunn. Kissy, kissy, kissy. That's the problem. That's the problem with James Gunn. These are the issues we have with this situation. So it's rather messy right now. But as I said on my live last night, it doesn't mean he's not, him and Peter are not going to give us something great. We just have to be patient. But clearly, the fans are not the issue because the fans didn't go to the Hollywood Reporter and talk out of school. No, that was someone at WB. You are making enemies, James Gunn. And if I were you, I'd watch my back. But not from the fans, but the people you're working with at that studio. This has been Movies TV Man with me, Mick, your host with the most. Just ask your girlfriends and your wife. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. Hit the notification bell so you never miss this beautiful perfection. And I'll see you again in the next video. Until I see you again, goodbye. Au revoir. Auf Wiedersehen.